Good afternoon, everyone. We are happy to give a talk about the Android Bundler, the bridge to root. First, we would like to introduce ourselves. This is my colleague Hong Li. Hello. Uh, I'm Hong Li Han. I'm a security researcher at the core team of Qihu 360. Uh, and I mainly focus in on the AOSP and kernel by hunting and exploitation. I am Ming Jian. I'm the leader of core team. So, what does the core team do? It's a security focus group started in the middle of 2015. We focus on the Android and Linux platform security research and aim to discover zero-day vulnerabilities, develop POC, and export. We have found more than 200 CVE. In 2017, since we submitted so many high-quality reports to Google, Android VRP reached our team as a Android top research team. This slide, I would like to introduce what Bender is and why Bender. Bender is an Android specific IPC mechanism. It's implemented as a driver in the kernel. Here is a simple architecture of Bender IPC. It's used for nearly everything that happens across processes in the core platform. What's more, Bender was accepted in the main Linux kernel in February of 2015. Bender is so important that it's one of the most attractive attack surfaces on Android. We have done some work around the Bender driver. For example, we analyzed the possible attack surface by code auditing and fuzzing. We are lucky and find some bugs, like CVE 2025 and other zero-day vulnerabilities. Furthermore, we explore them to gain the systems and uh, root privilege. Especially the CVE-2025. With this single vulnerability, we root the latest Pixel 3 XL. As far as we know, it's the first time the Pixel 3 XL has been rooted. Next. I would like to introduce the root cause of CVE-2025. First, I would like to talk about some basic background knowledge about the Bender IPC. Simply, there are four steps during the Bender IPC. Step, step one, the client sends the BC transaction to the driver. Step two, the server reads the BR transaction from the driver. Step three, the server sends the BC reply to the driver. Step four, the clients read the BR reply from the driver. The client, the driver, and the server share the same physical memory. The client maps the memory to its own address space and access it with a user point. The driver access the memory with a kernel point. There is a mapping between the kernel pointer and the user pointer. The driver uses the struct bundle buffer to Describe the buffer user for transaction. When the server sends BC reply to the driver, what happened in the band driver? 
the driver allocates a band buffer object, and then copies the reply data to the buffer data. When the client sends the BC free buffer and the user pointer to the driver, what happened in the driver? The driver maps the user point to the kernel point, finds out the band buffer object related with the kernel point, and then free the buffer and the band buffer object. So, there is a question: What happens if client tries to free the reply buffer while server is doing BC reply? Is there any protection? Unfortunately, the answer is no. There is no lock to protect the band buffer object. After the object is allocated, there is a risk window. We can free the band buffer object before it's used. This would lead to a UAF problem. This UAF bug is an all-round vulnerability. Because we can do the arbitrary write when server calling copy from user, because T buffer is controlled. And also, we can do the arbitrary read when client calling copy to user, because T buffer and T buffer target are controlled. What's more, leaking kernel symbol is very easy. T buffer, T buffer data size, offset size, and data are all leaked. Bender is so powerful and so is a vulnerability. With this vulnerability, we can do arbitrary read, write. Universal root, especially sandbox escaping. It affects Android devices in recent two years. So we gave the vulnerability a name: Water Drop. Water Drop comes from the fiction, the Three Body Problem. The Water Drop destroyed nearly all of the Earth's starships, just like the one. Vulnerability destroyed nearly all of Android devices. Next, my colleague Hong Li would demonstrate how to exploit this bug. Okay. Uh, this vulnerability is able to read or write anywhere in the kernel memory space. Uh, when trying to root device, there are still several several problems. First, it's really hard to produce this problem indeed because the time window for triggering the malicious buffer free operation is very narrow. And second, it needs an efficient heap string uh, function, so we are able to occupy the Unexpected thread buffer. Uh, hey, sorry. Okay. As mentioned above, in order to trigger the use of free problem, we should try to successfully execute the BC free buffer in such a narrow window. After the band alloc new buffer is done, and before the code in line 3175 is reached, a symbol coders between this time window is shown on the right side. It's really hard to run thousands of lines or symbol coders in such a narrow window. 
because it's well checked user allow user free. If it's true, it will return. So the BC free buffer failed. And even it by bypass this check, it will call the bundle a local free buffer later. Uh, them all checks here. They are all bug ons and system crash and reboot. So, how to extend the time window? This is a good question. I try, uh, we try lots of methods, such as we uh, study on the CPU frequency. Uh, in fact, the frequency on the PL3 is not the same. There are high one and the low one. Uh, so, we try to allocate in the low frequency CPU while freeing in high one. It seems that it goes farther, but not enough. Then we study, study on scheduler. And we notice that the new size log, it may affect the scheduler. <laughs> Indeed, it is. Uh, it will call the weak up queue when the unlock event happens. What's more, when doing BC free buffer, it calls the mutex log. So, we can let the freeing process waiting for, waiting to be weakened by, by the, the server process thread and the client process thread into a CPU CPU by keeping all the other CPUs busy enough. Also, could the could call the scheduler set affinity for insurance. This works very well, a nearly 100% success rate. It's not easy to trigger this bug indeed because it needs the cooperation between the client process and the server process. In this section, I will detail how to trigger the vulnerability stably. Uh, in order to achieve this, we should think out how does allocating and freeing job works first, as shown between line 378 and 392. It will traverse the red-black tree to find the best fit one from the free buffers first delay. Then, if the buffer size of the best fit one is not equal to the wanted size, it will call Kizzy alloc to apply for a new one. This one will be added to a free buffer red black tree and will be used next time when applying for such a size, such a size band buffer object. Then, how does the free buffer, free job works? As shown in 6096.24, it's well check if the buffer is the least, is the last one. If not, the next one will be picked out and check the next free is true or not. And the call, and the key free is called in binder delete free buffer actually. Later it will check if that is a pre one before the buffer. If true, it will free the base buffer and keep the proof one. In conclusion, the band drive loves to keep the band buffer object with smaller buffer data value. So, how to trigger this vulnerability stably? I think we have the answer. We divide this into two parts. Step one, continuously request the server process to produce Loss of the reply and should avoid calling the destructor of the puzzle because the destructor of the puzzle will send BC free buffer to the kernel. It's out of our control. 
Step two, uh, let's go like this. We should free this in reverse order. We create two threads, the thread one for sending BC free buffer and the thread two for sending BC transaction as shown in the finger. We free the buffer in reverse order and the kernel with a lock of free by the ruler mentioned above. When the BC free buffer command from the client process and the BC reply command from the server process happen at the same time, the OF problem could be triggered. This is a long window for doing hip spring too. By such a process, we can trigger this vulnerability very stably. Uh, in this section, we will detail how to link the kernel symbols with this vulnerability. As you see, the date side, the off side we have mentioned above is the leak point. point. We use the mutex log mechanism to extend the time window and spray after sending BC free buffer to the kernel. So when the server process is waked up again, it should, it will set the target node to the to null pointer and uh, to pointer in 3178 line. So it's not a good idea to leak the kernel symbol by the target node. But the D size, the offset size are available. And what about the data? The data will be treated as a writable address. When coin comes from to user, the data will be written to it. So if we want to info kernel symbols from the kernel, we should to satisfy these two conditions. Uh, the first one, one of them could leak the kernel symbol, kernel info, and also the data should be the writable address. And no crash after being written, this makes it more difficult. Now, uh, so if there is a method to bypass the checks of the tbuffer data in copy from user, this is definition of, of the copy from user. It's mainly do the check object size and the child function arch copy from user. It's happy to see the annotations skip all tests if the size is zero. So go on, let's check the arch copy from user. The arch copy from user returns bytes not copied. So the copy from user will return zero if we make the tr d size zero. It will not go to the error branch. But if we set the tr d size zero, could we obtain a valid band buffer object and more? Let's check the code, the annotations, pad zero size buffers so they can get assigned unique address. That's great. We are still able to obtain a valid band buffer object. Now, we should think out how to make the TR DSR zero. It's very easy, in fact. Find the bundle native service interface like this. It is returned directly as no data routing to the reply. Now, 
we do not need to care about the data anymore. Just try to leak the kernel symbol by the data size of says size. So how to find a valid info leak structure from the vast amount of coders work hard for 24 hours every day? No. You may try to solve the computer problems in computer way. We wrote a filter in the key malloc and key free. Then we make use of the fast tools to trigger all kinds of system calls. Then have a rest, wait for hours or maybe days, analyze logs and select one. Hip string skills are one of the most important parts when trying to exploit with a use of free vulnerability. The hip string skills used for exploiting the workshop vulnerability will be introduced in this section. Think about this. It's very time consuming to find an available hip string structure. It should require no permission and bypass checks. Most of all, it could leak what we want. By hard working, we found it. But sadly, if the life cycle, life cycle of it is out of control, it may cause many problems. Could we find an efficient method to turn love cycle of it from uncontrollable into controllable? Think about the key lock and the key lock. The key lock is based on the key lock, but it will memory set the memory to zero immediately after the memory is located, but the key lock will not. We take the object A and the object B. For example, the object A is released, released. Later, its memory is, co is occupied by the object B. And it's applied for memory by calling key malloc. If the object B needs less than the given by the kernel, that will be even better. And if the life cycle of the object B can be controlled, the prior state of object A will be leaked, and the re residual data will be kept. It works like this. First time, the unexpected release object released, and we occupied it and put the wanted date there. The next time we occupied it to control its life cycle, this will be helpful when exploiting with a use of free vulnerability. We can use this to protect the unexpected free buffer caused by triggering this vulnerability. We are able to release it at a more appropriate time. Here, I will show an example about this. We will call the F set chart tree to put the wanted data there and then use the stretch and notify event info to gather life cycle. And we use the F side chart tree instead of the set chart tree because it's more lightweight, lightweight, and will not locate an other size 128 slab object. It can help us write the wanted data to the unexpected release buffer when calling copy from user. The value here is the date we passed in. And the size of the struct unnotified event info can be set to a relatively small value. 
uh, small value, uh, maybe a little bigger than 48. And we apply memory by calling keymalloc. So it could be used to guard the life cycle. Life cycle. You can use the FSHR tree to do guard 3 2, or adjust the size to guard all three more fat. This one, I show an example if we say the, uh, so the user data now, it will, it will, it will, it could be used to for guard hip three. The coder and the flag in the strand, oh, this one I would like to show a blade spray for this vulnerability. We find the hip spring structure around the band driver context. Uh, the coder and the flags showing on the left side uh, has the same offset with the date in strength band buffer. They are all 88. So we can write the BC transaction after the BC free buffer in M out and it will do hip spray immediately after the BC free buffer finished. And we also use a mirror spray because the size 128 slab objects are frequently used. For example, weaving called spray functions, it will allocate an other two size 128 slab objects before the target slab object is allocated. So, how to deal with this situation? And we need to free as two symmetrically. This was well in our test. We have just talked about how to spray. It's time to use this vulnerability to do arbitrary write. As mentioned above, the reply is it obtained from the server process, but sadly we cannot create a server on Angel. We have an idea. Could we set the value to the server and get it back? After searching, we found two. The first one could help us control two bytes. It means we can arbitrarily write whatever data a uh, two bytes data. The second one could control 16 bytes every time. That's enough for our exploitation. And we will use this interface later to exploit the pixels. We do arbitrary write, but how do you know if it's time to stop? If we, how do you know we have write success? We put a flag here, win screen, and check each time when we receive the reply. If we received the flag we have put, is success written. And we have arbitrary available ability now. Let's try to do arbitrary read. As mentioned above, we use the target node for arbitrary read, but it will be set to now pointer when the process is wicked. So we try to get hip three method and call the FSH tree with size 88 and the loops. We have adjust, we should, we should also need to adjust the CPUs and control the spray time.
Okay. Now we are able to arbitrary write, arbitrary read, and leak the kernel symbols. We will try to root the devices. In the following session, I will introduce how to root the pixel device in two methods. The first one, correct the correct directly. The second one, using the KSMA attack. So, how to leak the correct address with this vulnerability? It's not easy to leak the credit directly. And even we can actually read, but who knows where to read? We try to leak the base address, uh, address or an object whose live SQL is controllable. Then we try to release it and op occupy it immediately with the target object. Later, we could get a target value by arbitrary read. Here, I will introduce an easy to use heap string structure and continue the cred. The F cred is also the credential of the process who is opening the file. It will call when opening a device or file, it will call the get empty flip and uh, in the 262. The F cred will be set to the cred or credential of the process. The sync PT, PT list could be leaked to us by using this vulnerability because the offset shown on right side the, uh, is 6-4. And the sync PT, PT list point to a structure sync phase object whose size is 160. It's also afraid when the structure sync PT object is released. Then we occupied with the structure file object. Because it's 160 and the stride file, stride file is 256. So they will use the same size. Then we check the arbitrary read, read, read to obtain the credential address and write them to zero to root directly. This, this is an example by attacking the F credit to root directly. And in this session, I will introduce how to root by the KSMOE attack. This method is provided by Yong Wang last year. It's a, it uh, attacks the swapper PDR to ob obtain the privilege to write the kernel coders. And it still works on Android device currently. But it needs to attack the Tramp page DR on Pixel 3 because the configure MF kernel 80 EL0 has been set in the Pixel 3 to defend the meltdown. It will MF the kernel when running in user space.
So v root is v root is by the following steps disable the SE Linux enforcing set URD, JRD, URD, and so on to zero. And we set the current secure bits to zero. This one is for by this by by writing this one to zero, we are able to access the prob with a uh, dir directories of the apps. We write the coders of the get rest GRD and change the machine code to the right side one to write the URD, GRD, URD to zero. And call this one to write them to write the security bits to zero. And we should set the cred can be set to 3F and 8F. And we root it. Okay, now I will show you a video. Oh, I'm sorry. It is could not display here. This uh, in the image version uh, at the December uh, twenty two thousand and uh, eighteen. This one bypasses the key ASL. Okay. okay. Open this one.
直接直接点开这个，类似。OK， 来 back。So， 呃、uh, ，this conclusion section。It's more and more difficult now to find a universe root buggers on Android devices, but no system is safe, and we should find find the gaps when. Digging bugs, because the smart files do very well now. We should find out what they cannot do, and difference make a difference. We should try new method and new techno techniques. Thank you, and so on. Uh, any questions? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. So, may I know that in your guard spray process, right, you are trying to find some controllable object that you can control the life cycle and the size. So you say that you try to find such object via some fuzzing technique.、Uh, is that right? Uh. Ah, find it. Just the last one. Just Uh, yes, we、uh, we add the filter in key three and key melog, and we run the father, so it could uh produce a lot of logs, and、uh, we are able to select one there. Uh, may I know that how many of such pro- objects did you find? Uh, two. Because we we find in uh not a long time, and we find a available one. We stop this. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any more question? Then I'd like you to, to ask you to give a big hand to our speakers.